Welcome to Fremantle, Western Australia. 23 yachts competing in the toughest fully crewed ocean race in the world are about to set off on the third leg to New Zealand. These intrepid sailors have already completed 14,000 miles since leaving Southampton in September. They've endured extremes of heat and cold, storm force winds and flat calms, and there's still 19,000 more miles to go. The next stage is the shortest, but tactically the most difficult. It's nearly three and a half thousand miles to Auckland. The first arrivals are expected in a fortnight's time. This is the Cape of Good Hope, the bottom end of Africa. On that side of me is the tropical Indian Ocean, and over there, the South Atlantic. 500 years ago, all this was unexplored by Europeans. That was when the first adventurous sailors, Spaniards and Portuguese, found their way down to these scurvy and unwholesome latitudes. They were pioneering trade routes round to the East Indies men like Bartolomeo Diash and Vasco da Gama. They were worried men, though, because these are treacherous coasts, and they were never quite sure that they weren't going to fall off the edge of the world. The last thing they were looking for was penguins, but here in sunny Africa, they found them. The NBS, the great fork you are bound to, has knocks me around. Though Plymouth, Massachusetts builds itself as the birthplace of America, it's never grown into more than a baby-sized town. The only time this quiet community stirs itself into a passion is when some other town or city contests its claim to be the seedbed of the United States. The story that links England's only Plymouth with the first among 53 others around the world, is reverently handed from generation to generation and acted out by youngsters each Thanksgiving day. The Federal Furnace Elementary School stands not on the site of an old municipal incinerator, but at the spot where the Pilgrim's descendants built a foundry to make cannonballs to chuck at the English in unhappier times. Relations between the old world and the new have ever been ambiguous. But the pupils' Thanksgiving version of history skips wars of independence and goes right back to the desolate New England coastline of the 1620s. Perhaps the most striking memorial to the Pilgrim Fathers is the exact replica of the Mayflower, built at Brixham in Devon and sailed across the Atlantic in 1957. It's a living museum where sailors and pilgrims dressed in period costume and speaking as if in the 1620s, vividly convey the story of the voyage and its perils. At Federal Furnace School, the youngsters have the tale by heart. <laughs> 